Welcome to the Wonders of Watercolour where this week we're going to be painting something a little bit different. Now a little while ago over on our Facebook group I launched a competition asking members of that group to submit their photographs, their reference photographs and I was going to make the winning photograph into a tutorial. There were so many gorgeous photos I couldn't pick one I've picked four winners and we've already done a couple of tutorials there for the other winning photographs. So this is where we are going to get our inspiration this week. So thank you so much for Sandy for submitting the photograph that you see on your screen and allowing us to use it for this tutorial. I wanted to make this a kind of line and washed. I wanted it to have that kind of loose illustrative look. If you're not a fan of drawing, don't worry. I do provide you with a reference image like this, which I have traced down myself, a very light image onto my watercolour paper. And I will tell you later on how you can have access to this for completely free if you'd like to trace down your own version. So all I've done is I've printed it out and scribbled on the back, as you can see, placed it onto my watercolour paper that I've got taped down onto my board here and just gone over the outline like this. What this has left me with is a really fine outline that you can barely see here on the paper, but I'm going to use a couple of pens here to draw my outline first. Now, when you're working in line and wash, there are lots of different ways you can do it. You can apply your watercolor first and then go over it with your, um, with your liner pens, or you can put the pen on first. It doesn't really matter, it's what you prefer. This time I'm going to do it the other way around. Ordinarily I would put my wash on and then outline it with these, but because we're going to do something a little bit different today, this is the way I've decided to do it. I've got a 0 0.05 and a 0 0.3. Um, these ones are from Etcha, but of course, as always, use what you have within your set and um, what you feel comfortable with. These are water and fade proof pens. They're fine liners. Um, You've probably seen them before. I have used them before in my tutorials, but I thought they'd be really cool. So with my pencil line there to guide me, and uh, we can start to go around that pencil line that I have. To start with, I'm going to use a really light touch. I may not even use the number three brush. We'll see how we get on. So all I'm doing now is just putting in those base lines, okay? They are very light, so I'm just going to do a really, really light touch here just so that I've got a basic shape to work with. Now, I don't want to have straight lines. I want them to be really kind of loose. So I'm using a kind of letting that paper do the work for me. It's a textured paper. This is a rough surface. It's from Arches, um, a brand I really, really like. And it will help, of course, with that textured look that I'm after. So I'm just gonna put the basic lines in first of all and uh, just to guide me where I'm going to go. We don't want this to be perfect. We want it to look really loose and illustrative. So just let the pen do the work for you, putting in those outline shapes. Very, very simple to do. And you can make this as, as fancy as you want to. So I'm just gonna do another line here coming down. We have a window here. And we're just gonna put that in. With the bricks, you don't have to put them all in. You can just do one or two, just to give the illusion of those bricks being there. When you're doing this kind of illustration, typically you would just put one or two details in and not the whole thing. So I wanted this to have a kind of dreamy look. And you'll see as I work through what I'm doing. And I'd love you to join in with me. So if you do want access to this, stick around and I'll tell you later on how you can grab yourself that for free. And of course you can make it your own. You don't have to follow um, the pattern that I'm doing. You can do it in ordinary watercolor if you would prefer that look. So I'm just coming down. Now we have some grass on the base here. So all I'm going to do is have a kind of imaginary line running down the bottom and just do a little bit of a squiggle just like this to give the illusion of there being a base to this little hut. So we have it's grounded and it looks a little bit like that, okay? And where else? We've got a little door here or a window here. And we have a, a door and a window around this area here. So we have a line coming down. I think this might be a window. 
Now, ordinarily on this YouTube channel, we paint botanicals and we do more close-up work. Um, so if you are new here, this isn't our usual type of content, but it's nice to do something different from time to time, isn't it? I think sometimes we all get a little bit stuck. And very often when we're looking for inspiration, it's a great way to get out of our watercolour ruts, to give ourselves the opportunity to maybe do something that we're not used to doing. So we have a little outline here now and I'm just going to start to put in a little bit more detail for the texture of this little hut or cottage. So coming down here for example we have a little bit on the top of the chimney and coming down like this. And I'm using my pen a little bit higher up just to give it that kind of loose edge and just adding a few tiles on the roof to give the illusion of there being a pattern there coming down and using this pen to add as much detail as I want to. Doubling up on those lines and just drawing in one or two of the bricks. As I said, you can make it your own. You can add as many as you want to, but we're just giving the illusion of there being bricks on the, on the house and the chimney. Um, all that kind of stuff. So just work it down. So once you've got your pencil line in shape, you can start to really build up this image. And we can start to put a bit more detail in towards the end if necessary. But for now, we just need to get this on. Another double line there. Um, we've got this illusion of there being slats on the cottage because it's made of wood. And we want to be able to see that. So we've, where we've got this bit coming down here, we can put a few lines in there as well. And once again, we have some lines coming down and across. So when you're using these pens, make sure that you do use watercolour or waterproof pens rather, because you don't want the paint to make that ink bleed. It's really important that they are waterproof and hopefully fade proof as well, because you don't want that to go askew. So we've got a little bit of a roof coming down here. And if you wanted to just add another layer to that. The reason I'm doing this as a, as a lining wash, um, as opposed to my ordinary watercolour paintings, when I saw this little photograph, and one of the reasons I picked it as a winner, it really stood out to me. It was so atmospheric, and I've been itching to do a line and wash painting for such a long time like this. So it was a great opportunity for me to, um, to have the chance to, to do it. And I really hope that you enjoy it, uh, Sandy and that we do you proud. Um, do join in and uh, let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to just take my pen and kind of just do these little wiggly things. Don't worry about going outside the lines. That's the whole point of this kind of painting is you want it to look loose and exciting. And so these double lines give it that kind of sort of like a sketch look. Okay, that's what, we're, that's what we're looking for here. This is really outside my comfort zone because I'm used to working tight, um, as you will know from my watercolour tutorials if you're familiar with my channel. Now I can say that this is safely dry. We can start to put whatever colours that we want to to this little piece. Now I have left the reference photograph in screen for you to take a look at. If you want to work strictly to the photograph and put your whatever colours you want to in, then go right ahead. I'm going to be a little bit more creative with this one today. Um, I'm going to be using my paints from Deep Deep Light. These are from Ray's Blooms palette. Um, obviously we're not doing botanicals today, but it doesn't matter. We can put whatever we want. We're making art and we can make it as exciting or as vibrant or as muted as we want to. Remember, art is up to you. It's, there are no hard and fast rules as far as I'm concerned. I am indeed a great advocate of using the materials that you have, so go right ahead. I'm going to be mixing my paints in this little palette here that I've got from Etcher. Um, I, all the materials, by the way, I will link in the description box underneath this video, um, including a link that I have to um, with a discount code for Deep Deep Lights Paints if you want to treat yourself to these or indeed anything else from their wonderful selection. Okay, so now 
Looking at this painting, I wanted to give it a lovely kind of muted tone. I'm really into that kind of wintry look at the moment. We're still in winter here in the UK and I think that's influencing my paintings. There's a colour here that I haven't used yet called Forest Green and I'd like to use that to start with along with a colour called Bramble Jam. Now if you've got a Perilean Green you could use that along with maybe something like an Indigo but because these are granulating colours they will be rather special so I want to use them today. I'm going to put a little bit of water in each of these. I want them to be watery so I'm going to just go in with these and I've got some kitchen paper to the side to block my paper if I need to. So let's go in with a forest green to start with. This is a lovely dark, I would call it a kind of neutral green. Just look at that colour. I mean this is beautiful. Let me show you on some swatch paper how it looks. It's a really you know what I mean, like a neutral green. Gorgeous. And Bramble Jam, if you've already got this set, you will have heard me, you will have tried this out for sure. And um, <laughs> its beauty is, is just incredible. This one has little flecks of pink in it, um, although they won't be that apparent in this mix, because I want this to kind of form part of the, I'm just going to have a little bit less than that one there. So Bramble Jam, is that kind of colour. So I think these two complement each other really, really well. They go together nicely. Um, I don't know whether the camera can pick this up, but you can see here the granulation. This is now starting to go pink on the outside edge because of this flecks of pink that they've got in there. So if you have got this colour, this will be a great time to use it. So and you can see the separation on my palette here in the ceramic palette. So that's what we're going to do to start with and we'll see how this looks as we work through. So because I'm going to do the background colour first, we're going to just uh, do it layer by layer. I'm using my half inch flat brush. This is from my collaboration um, that I did with Cora Craftimo last year in 2023. And we did sell out quite quickly, but we are going to be doing a second launch. And once again, I will put the link to the brushes in the description box underneath in case you want to order yourself, uh, yourself a set. They were very, very popular. So um, if you like the idea of that, I'll put them in the link underneath this video. I've got some water in the middle here. We're going to be really, really bold with this application. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plain water over the top part here. There's a little bit of pigment in there, but I'm not too worried. Um, we're just going to get this on, working wet in wet. If you do get some of this onto there, it doesn't matter. In fact, I'm going to take some of the water over this part. Okay, so just going to go on one side of it. So I've applied the water to one side of this only. Okay, I'm just going to let that settle into the paper for one second. Because this is a rough surface paper, um, it's really absorbent, but we're just going to let it go in the paper there. And I'm starting off by mixing this, um, I'm just going to give it a mix because it does separate out in the palette and it's still glistening a little bit so I might be going in a bit too quickly but that's okay. We can drop this on. And the Bramble Jam as well. I'm just going to pop that on. So it kind of gives the idea of this being like a loose style, moody, dark sky. Okay, really gorgeous. Just let it go into the paint, into the building as well. That's fine. Just drop it in and let it do its thing. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. Just apply it where you want to. This is painting, this is art, and it's meant to be fun, and it's meant to be enjoyable, and it's meant to be, most, most importantly, stress-free. Okay, so you can see it moving into the water here where I've wet the page. And because I want it to be nice and loose, I'm just gonna add some water to the top to merge those colors together like this. So just plain water and it's going to help that, that bleed like this. Okay, just going to help the process along. Nice moody sky. Adding a little bit more of that green, letting the granulation do the work for you and a bit more bramble. Just going to have a bit more pigment. So this is bramble jam with forest green. Just look at those colours. And then we can just be patient and let it dry. Now at the start of this video, I mentioned that I provide you with a free traceable. When Sandy provided me with a reference photo, I took it into Procreate and I traced it down 
to create a really simple outline. By doing this, it means that the outline is simple for you to trace down because sometimes when we're looking at a photograph, it can be really difficult to figure out which bits go where. So I take the guesswork out for you and I do it like this. If you want to grab this for free, all you need to do is join our Patreon. For the free membership level, it doesn't cost you a penny. It is completely free. There are no catches. There's no um, pressure for you to join up and become a paid member of my Patreon. But all we do is when we upload um, a video that's got an outline like this, it means you can grab it for free and it saves you scrolling through our Facebook group where we used to put all our images before we found a better way of doing it, which is via Patreon. So it's completely free to get hold of this. And I will link it in the description box underneath. But I have to tell you, we do, of course, have a paid membership level for botanical painting. Now botanical painting is my thing, it's something I'm extremely passionate about and while I appreciate it's very different to this video, in case it is something that interests you, let's just take a look to see what you get. When you join Patreon you will have access to exclusive content that you just won't find here on YouTube. Whether you're a seasoned artist or just dipping your brush into botanical watercolour, you may want to join us here on Patreon where the magic happens. And with Patreon's new collections tab, it makes accessing the tutorials super easy. When you join us here on Patreon, we dive deep into the art of botanical watercolours, from vibrant blooms to fine detail, and I'm here to guide you every step of the way. We have three membership levels to suit your skill and budget, and we even have a mentorship and coaching level. So if you're serious about developing your skills, then this could be the level for you. And now you can join Patreon for free, which will give you access to all of our YouTube traceables, which will be delivered weekly to your inbox, so no more scrolling through for the images. So if you are ready to embark on a watercolour adventure, unlock exclusive content and join a community that celebrates the beauty of botanicals, hit that join button, which I will link in the description. leave and join Patreon at any time. So like I said, in case you want to do botanical painting and it's of interest to you, then please join us there. I'd love to see you and it's a way of supporting my channel. As I've been talking to you there, you can see how this paint is blowing into the paper, giving this gorgeous muted toned effect where you can see the granulation of the green and the blue really merging together to give it a bit of drama. Now I can't do anything else at this stage because I do want it to dry down so I'm going to have to be a little patient but it does give me an opportunity to say to you if you are enjoying this video please could you hit that like button it's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. You may also want to consider subscribing. I create videos here on YouTube completely free. They won't be on Patreon because all my Patreon tutorials are just made for my Patreon but they are full length, you can join in. So if this is something that appeals to you, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification that you see on the side there. That way you'll be notified when I upload new content and you won't miss out. That said, I'm gonna stop talking for a moment or two, let this dry and come right back. So everything's dry so I can safely go in with other washes. Now when we're painting like this, it doesn't really matter if the paint merges into the other wash, but I'm keeping them separate and trying to keep it as easy as I can. So let's add some more colour. Now remember, you can use whichever colours you want to, but I do have my colours here swatched out ready, and I'm leaning towards using prickly pear for the main kind of body of the building, and maybe something else with a little bit of contrast just to add to the roof area, just so that we can see a little bit of difference there. And I'm thinking of going in with whatever I've got left on my palette already, which is the Bramble Jam. I'm also going to put a tiny tiny bit of a mixture of rose, acid, rose ashes, which is this burgundy tone, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of Mayan, which is the red that I have in my palette. I want to put this kind of in the door area, um, as we can see there, just a nice kind of burgundy tone so that we can get this variation of colour in. Now remember, you can use whichever colours that you want, and you can use whatever brushes that you want, but in this instance, I don't very often use the, the half inch flat that was in my kit, so I thought it'd be really cool to use it today. So let's go in with Prickly Pear. Prickly Pear and Partridge from my set are very, very strange looking colours. Um, they are, when you apply them, they kind of change a little bit. So just keep in mind that if you have got the set and you put the colour down, it's going to look slightly different once it, um, once it dries down. I'm going to just take the Prickly Pear mix that I've just mixed up and I'm going to put this all over the roof area like this in just one simple wash. So just picking up that colour 
You can see how it's switched already from a green tone to a, a more muted tone. It's a very magical colour. So I'm just applying it with a brush, really, really simple. I'm not being too fussy. And I'm just going to kind of just take this colour down the side like this. To that, I'm adding a little bit of bramble for a bit of variation. I'm going to take this down, this one and this one. And I'm going to add a little bit of green to it as well so that we've got the variation coming up on this side here. So I'm not being too fussy. Remember, you don't have to go inside the pencil lines for this one. This is all about just putting colour down. Not being too fussy. This is a great piece to do if you're a little bit nervous about using watercolour. So we're just going to put that in. A bit more prickly pear. A bit of green. And we can put this on the roof. Don't be frightened to drop in some colour here and there. And just put a little bit on the chimney breast there and just take it down. This brush, by the way, is great for adding sort of corners uh, because you've got this nice blunt on the edge there. So I'm picking up a bit of that reddish tone and I'm just going to drop it in here and here. And I'm going to mix a little bit of my favourite colour, which is green woodpecker. Any green will do. And I'm just going to drop this in on the base. Just nice and easy. Let it bleed into that paint. And you can see how I'm just dropping that brush and doing this kind of squiggly motion to give the illusion of there being some grass, just like that. It's a little bit too strong there, but that's okay. Pop it in, let it bleed into this. And I'm going to clean my brush, pat it on the kitchen paper and just merge this into that existing colour there. Okay. Now I'm going to do something that not everyone enjoys doing, but at this stage I'd like to, I'm just picking up my, um, my number eight round, okay, any brush, just going to pick it up and I'm just going to do a bit of paint splattering because I think it's going to look really nice for this painting. If anybody hates it, please don't come for me in the comments, um, it's not for everybody. I'm just going to do a bit of like wiggling that brush as well. I think sometimes I want to just make it look, I want to make it look a little bit heavier in places, picking up any colour and just dropping it in like this. Again, just go on the outside edge. This is prickly pear. I don't want it to be too strong because I want it to look a soft painting. Um, just drop that in. Just let it bleed into that grass and just drop a few bits here and there to give a bit of contrast. And I'm just using a kind of patting motion to release that paint. Okay. And weave it in between the grass a little bit, just to make it look really cute. Clean my brush. And I'm just feeling it needs a little bit more of that bramble. I'm just going to go at the top here and merge these colours together. Again, this is all about creating kind of like a loose style wash. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Part of the joy of painting is that you're making it do what you want it to do. I'm just going to add. I can't really tell from the photo whether the it's the border of these that are red or whether it's the, the, the fence that we have around it. But I don't mind. I'm going to just put it in anyway. Um, any colours that you've got that you're happy with just popping on. And just let it blur like that. I feel like it needs a bit more of this. We're going to go in again. We can just do a little bit of a squiggle around there because I want it to be darker one side compared to the other. Okay. We can take it down here as well because I think it just gives it a little bit of a more painterly look. Now I know this kind of painting isn't for everybody. So, you know, give it a go. You might enjoy it. You might even enjoy doing something really, really different. Um, this is a little bit more of that forest green. And you have to be a bit more loose with this. You have to just be a little bit more creative. I'm going to let it drop into there because I want that granulation to come through. Mix a bit more and just drop it in. That come through one side really dark over here. And then we can just do a little bit of a zhuzh to give that illusion. Again, I'm going to let that dry and then we can make any final adjustments with the pen. But don't be frightened to add water. This is all about adding plenty and plenty of water. You can even do your blooms. You can drop the water in. 
it's about being free and loose with your painting rather than the restrictions of uh, normal um, botanical work. So it's lovely to do something really different. Because these paints are granulated and I can see how that colour is changing before my eyes. So I'll show you a close up when it dries down a little bit, but I'm just going to let that blur in like that. I'm going to let that dry and then we can come back and make all the final adjustments. This wash is now completely dry and it's up to you at this stage what you do with your painting to make it your own. But I do feel it's lacking a little bit of depth so let's go in with some more colours and see what we can do to this painting to just give it a little bit of a boost of colour and some depth. So I'm adding a few more puddles of water in my palette and I'm going to use, I'm going to go with um, Mirabella which is a lovely bright yellow tone. Um, just to add a little bit of contrast here with an, um, just a little bit of a wash there. I just felt I needed something to kind of unify these two colours. I'm going to go back to the prickly pear. Remember prickly pear, you can see the colour separating in the pan here. It's a granulating tone that has lots of different particles which make it really exciting to use. So I'm going to drop prickly pear on this side. Just a tiny bit. We want it to be really loose and flowing. We don't want a strong painting here that's got too much going on. And again, I'm just going to drop a little bit of it underneath there where I've dropped it on my end. And again, on the side of this little pillar here, or the chimney, I'm going to take a little bit more of the Bramble Jam, which is that lovely blue tone. Yeah, actually I wouldn't mind working wet and wet. It's entirely up to you whether you'd rather work, if you'd rather work wet and wet or wet and dry. I'm really enjoying working wet and wet at the moment because I just think I, I really like the effect. So I'm just going to drop that in with my brush, just really gently, just to give a little bit of definition around the windows and the doors like that. I really like that look and whatever's left on the brush, I'm just going to use it to just put a little bit more detail on the roof. And again, just go to mix and just drop it in. The great thing about painting like this is, of course, you can use whichever colours you want to. You don't have to, well, you can always use whichever colours you want to, but you're not, you know, you're not restricted to um, anything in particular here. So just drop it in and I'm blending that out. Back in with prickly pear. You can see how that colour's changed a little bit and just drop it in. So we have a nice loose painting. I'm going to add a little bit, I'm going to add a few more flecks because I really like that look. I also quite like the idea of adding some water to this side now. It looks a little unbalanced. So I'm just going to do plain water glaze on this side. I can go over these splats of water because they are dry. Use my number eight brush. And we're just going to wet this down. I'm going to take, let's see, let's go back in with forest green and just drop. And also a bit more bramble jam. And so I just let it do its thing. It's very, very watery at the moment. You can see it pooling on the paper, which isn't ideal, but we can just put it on and just let it create this kind of atmospheric sky, which I think looks really lovely. I love that look. And because I really like the idea of watercolour splashes, what I'm going to do is pick up that colour and just let it bloom onto the paper. few more flicks. Remember if it's not blurring the way you want it to all you need to do is add more water. I love this look here where this is drying out and becoming a proper watercolour painting. Remember if you want to just add a bit more of a shade you can go in and add a darker value. You can see how the prickly pear is changing. When I apply the colour it goes on in this lovely brown tone and when it dries it becomes more of a 
um, more of a greeny, a greeny tone. And that's the beauty of this colour. I'm just going to take a little bit there as well, just to give a bit of an edge where these curve, where these buildings are meeting each other, where the lines are there. And again, just here and there, just to create a little bit of shadow. I really like this bit here, so I'm just going to add a bit more water to that. And we can enhance anything that we want to. So for this colour, I'm going back in with a mixture of prickly pear and bramble jam. And I'm just going to drop that in. Just the process. And just let that water bleed into that watercolour. And if you want to add a few more bits of foliage, you can do. But just let it do its thing. Let it be watercolour. If you haven't tried this method of painting before, do give it a go. When I tell you it's one of the most relaxing ways to paint, it really, really is. Um, I'm going to add more water here just to let it do its thing. It's such a lovely, lovely way to be expressive with painting rather than the structured painting that you might be used to. Uh, so give it a go and let me know how you get on in the comments. It's not for everybody, but unless you try something new, how will you know whether you like it or not? Just going to drop a bit more of that Mayan. Just for a little bit of colour, just to brighten it up. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to give it a finishing touch in a minute, but we have to be patient, let that dry and I'll be right back. The watercolour paper is dry. I have added a tiny bit more of the green tone down the bottom there. The colour I've used is green woodpecker. Of course, use whichever colour that you feel like using to make your painting unique to you, okay? Because that's what art is all about. At this stage, I want to go back in with my graphic pen. This is, of course, the Water and Fade Proof Pigment Ink Pen, a fine liner pen. And I just want to do a little bit more detailing on this to bring it all together. So if you grab yourself the, um, the outline from Patreon, which, as I said earlier on, is completely free, you can now look at that if you want to and just add a few more um, little bits of squiggles here and there. You can add a bit more detailing. If you wanted to add a bit of shading, for example, on the inside of this section, you could do that. A little bit of texture going this way. You could even use dots or whatever to do your shading if you want to, or you can add a bit more whatever you want to do. It's your painting, make it yours. I'm going to add just a few more details around the outside of this window here and I do feel that I'd like to add a bit more detail around this section here too. Just to add a bit of depth by squiggling that pen like that. If you wanted to take advantage of the, the paint line where it's dried, that's another cool thing to do. Just go around the outside of that with that pen And you can just make those accidental marks look deliberate, which I really, really enjoy. So where we've got this shadow here, you can go around the outside and just make it look deliberate. I really like that look. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. So I'm just going to add a bit of detail here on the chimney, coming down, just enhance one or two of these. If you want to just outline some of the bits of grass, you can do that. And it's just a case of adding whatever you want to. Like I said, I quite like this loose look. So I'm just going to go in and just add a bit of detail here. And this line underneath. And just darken that up. There is a darker value underneath this little ridge or ledge here and just down the side of this here just to give it a little bit of dimension but it's not necessary you can stop when you want to art's all about having fun creating pieces that give you joy and that's what it's all about sometimes you don't have to be accurate okay i'm just going to leave that be i think we're done and here we have our finished really moody atmospheric line and wash watercolour painting. As I said at the very beginning, 
There is no right or wrong way to apply watercolour paint to paper. Sometimes you need to experiment and whatever brings you joy. You could add your line and wash later, you could add it first, whichever way you want to. But do take advantage of grabbing yourself that free outline which I will put over on our free version of Patreon. There's no obligation to join up and pay anything. It's totally free as are our tutorials over here on YouTube every time we upload. If you hit that bell notification you'll be told if you're a subscriber to my channel and we would love to see you here as part of our community. Once again, thank you very much for watching and thank you to Sandy for letting us use your lovely photograph. I hope you enjoy it. I know it's slightly different to our normal stuff, but I thought um, it'd be quite exciting to do something new and hopefully inspiring. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.